O hidden light shining in every creature. O hidden love embracing all in oneness. May each who feels himself as one with thee know he is also one with every other Purusha. Sabi ko mera pranam. We welcome you all in Shankar Lodge, Delhi on the meeting today, this Saturday evening. We are privileged that our brother Dr. Rajiv Gupta, our Lodge Secretary and a National Lecturer will share his thoughts on the topic Astral Plane and the Astral Body, Part 8. He has already taken earlier seven parts on the said topic. We may mention here that Dr. Rajiv Gupta is a member of Shankar Lodge, New Delhi. He is currently secretary of the Shankar Lodge. He joined the Theosophical Society in 1989. He became a life member in the year 2005. He served on the post of president of Delhi Federation and Shankar Lodge on multiple occasions. He has participated in and conducted the study camps in Delhi. Professionally, he is working as chest specialist in ESIC Hospital, New Delhi. Now, without taking any more time, I request Dr. Rajiv Gupta to please start his talk today in continuation to his earlier talks on the astral body as well as astral plane. Thank you, Madhuti. Sadhguru Namaskar. Thank you very much. So we will just continue from where we left last time. We had seen this diagram, which is a very simplified version of what we call in theosophy the man, or we can say in another words, monad or jiva. This monad jivatma is the consciousness present or living or existing at a very, very subtle level, at a very deeper level. And for it to have some, uh, we can say, for it to grow or to have power or control, what we can say in short, its uh, abilities to grow in the lower five worlds, it projects a ray from itself and it comes down into the lower worlds. And as it as this ray or its reflection comes down into the lower worlds, it starts to create several bodies. Of course, the laws of nature are helping in creation of these bodies. The Jivatma itself is not able to do everything. These bodies we have termed in theosophy as Atmic body, Buddhic body, Causal body. We learned that these three bodies together, they constitute what we can say the higher self. Or we can say the consciousness working in this higher self as the ego. This is not the ego of the psychology or the psychologists of our, uh, in the way we understand in science. Then, Further down, as the projection continues downwards into the lower worlds, then another body called the mental body is made, sometimes called the lower mental body. 
then astral body is made and then the physical body is made. So here we have these bodies, the lower three bodies, the mental body, the astral body and the physical body are together, we call them as the lower self or the personality. This is the, this, this personality or the lower self is the mortal unit, if one could say, which reincarnates every time or is taken up afresh every time. We did this last time. Then we did last time, what are the seven planes of nature? And these seven planes each having seven subdivisions or seven subplanes. In the astral, we talked about there are seven. Then this was another way to understand that there is a physical body and all around the physical body as well as within the physical body, matter of all the other bodies also is interpenetrating or present at the same time at the same place. So, with this, we understood last time the cycle of reincarnation. When the reincarnation begins, we take up mental body, the astral body, the physical body. When the incarnation is occurred, when the incarnation is at the point of ending, then first there is we lose what we call a death, the physical body. Then the second death happens when we, when we lose the astral body. Then the third death occurs when we lose the mental body. In this way, the cycle gets completed. Now, we come to the astral body. And this is a diagram given in man visible and invisible. And we saw that in the average person, so, in an average person, what C. W. Ledbetter has done in this uh, book, Man, Visible and Invisible, he has categorized human beings into three broad categories, those who are undeveloped, uncivilized, those who are average, and those who are developed. So, in this way, just to give us an idea of what is the astral body as it is seen by a person who can see on the astral plane, what would that person see? That person would see that the physical body, which is right in the center of this ovoid, is seen here. This is the physical body in which 99% of the astral matter in the astral body is present within. But 1% of the astral matter of the astral body is present outside this physical body. We uh, went through this in some detail in the last talk. So those who have missed the last talk, they can um, visit the YouTube channel Theosophy Daily and, and go through that talk. So 99% of the astral matter of the astral body is within the physical frame. But there is still one person which is outside and this one person which is outside is called as astral aura. For the person who is on the astral plane and can see on the astral plane and remember it in the physical plane will see the astral body in this way roughly and will be able to make out the features of the person because the physical body will be recognizable in the astral plane as the astral body is going to conform to the physical features. Therefore, recognition of the physical, we can't see the physical body on the astral plane. When we have, when we are looking with astral sight on the astral plane, we can't see the physical plane, but we can see the counterparts of the physical plane as they are uh, uh, represented in the astral plane. So we are able to see and recognize the person and what we will see is not only the physical frame, the structure, the outline as well as we will be able to see a lot of colors and these colors they denote the various qualities or the various emotions that the person is having. These are the emotions when the person is quite stable, balanced, at rest, in his natural state then these 
colors they denote the resting state or relatively the person's basic traits or basic emotional state in such a case as we are seeing right now we will see several colors here like this is a band of green reddish band bluish band orangish yellow band like this then there are darker colors here all these colors denote that the person has various emotional qualities and how, what type of qualities how big they are in what want so we can quantify also how much they are expressing what are the different different types of uh, emotional um, make what is the emotional makeup of this person one who can see the astral body is able to make it out then we went further and saw that a person who is not developed or in an undeveloped person this is the state of astral body we can see that the outline is hardly seen and the colors are all mudded up cloudy way and they are of the lower nature meaning of the grosser type we did last time what is the meaning of different different colors this is the astral body of a developed person who is spiritually developed with the spiritual aspiration here we see only five or six types of colors in this particular diagram we have basically only five colors we have the wild fish color which denotes the high spirituality the aspiration towards spirituality the person wants to um, has an inclination or maybe he has thought that spirituality is his target in this life so this is the subtlest matter in the astral body that is why it is present at the topmost part of the astral body then you can see the bluish this denotes the ocean the yellowish part indicates the intellectual ability of the person then the reddish part indicates the love and the greenish part indicates the sympathy so what do we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 five colors are predominant in this astral body hardly brown gray black those are not colors even orangish is only a small part here you can see so this is a person if anybody who can see such a astral body on the astral plane will immediately recognize that this is a developed person this is the way uh, we were told a man is well and visible and last time we completed this we saw that there is a blue color which denotes the ocean the various shades of blue are there here we see last time we did this is a person who is of a devotional type so c w redpeter gives in the book man is well and visible just for our understanding two types of personalities one is a devotional type of personality and the other is the intellectual or the scientific type of personality so this is the astral body of the devotional type you can see the bluish color on the top most part of the person's astral body there is some amount of whitish color there is yellowish color reddish color and then there is a muddy green brownish colors are present so in such person we did in detail last time uh, the description of this devotion yellow indicates intellect rose color is love red is uh, usually on a black 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 ground we have anger so different colors have their own different shades and with them a little bit of different meanings are also attached this is the person who is of the scientific type or uh, the person who is more of the intellectual type hardly any blue color is seen as you can see mainly the yellowish color is there and there is a lot of orange color indicating pride and selfishness uh, among the intellectual so so we have this then there is some amount of pink color green color dark reddish color and then different shades of green associated with brown and gray are there we did this last time bluish uh, is hardly there 
As we can see, green is predominantly there in the middle and the lower part of the astral body. And it needs to be studied in the right way. Usually, it indicates adaptability. If gray is associated with green color, then we have deceit and panic, so it becomes negative. But if the green is of the emerald type, then it indicates unselfish person's ability to apply or let's say adaptability in the unselfish way. If there is play, pale, luminous blue green, then there is deep sympathy and compassion. Bright apple green, strong vitality. If brown comes in along with green, and usually, uh, and if, uh, if if it is with the deep red and scarlet, then it is jealousy. If gray is there, only gray is there, then there is depression. Like this, we see. Important point here is if we see a lot of brown and gray, then we can say that there is a lot of selfishness. So, C.W. Ledbetter says in today's humanity, this is one of the commonest colors seen in the astral body. Then we also understood that the unselfish or the better qualities, the nobler emotions of a human being, they are made up of subtler matter of the astral plane. That is why they are present at the upper or the middle portions of the astral body. And if more amount of matter of this type is present in the astral body of the person, then the, there will be less amount of gross or selfish or a negative type of emotional matter in the person's astral body. So the lower portion will then become narrower and the upper portion will become broader, like an egg sitting on the narrow, standing on the narrow. So that person will have, when will be seen from a distance on the acid plane, one can immediately make out that this person has, is a developed person. He has more of his qualities made of uh, subtler matter, more of nobler emotions, more of basically a virtuous person. So just the shape of the astral body also can tell us about this. This also we did last time. One more thing that uh, C. W. Redbeater wants us to know is that since the astral body is related in the upper or the higher or the subtler subplanes with the causal body or the higher mental body, in other words, the higher subplanes, the first, second, and third of the astral body or the astral plane, they affect the causal body or they are directly related to the higher mental plane. So, any development or activity in the person's astral body in this area, that is the first, second and third from the top, astral subplanes will direct, directly impact the person's causal body. Let's try to understand this. The causal body or the higher mental body is the body on which the impact of the virtues developed or the nobler emotions developed on the astral body will have a direct impact and they will make the causal body grow. So the causal body will be positively affected and this is one of the ways in which we can accelerate our evolution because the causal body grows from incarnation to incarnation. There is the growth of the astral body, the causal body which is happening in each incarnation. 
usually the growth happens not only during life but also after the death of the physical body and the essence body in the devachani plane the majority of the growth is happening at that point but during life and also during the uh, time when we are in the astral plane after the death of the physical body we can still affect and improve ourselves or grow or accelerate uh, our evolution by developing more and more virtues what are virtues the nobler emotions and what are those noble emotions that we have talked about those five that we have talked about so here we see a developed man has five rates of vibration in his astral body these five that we have talked about spirituality devotion love intellectual side and the sympathetic side five if we develop properly then we will automatically impact the causal body for the better now what we did last time also was that if there is a sudden rush of emotions so we did this was the point at which we had um, after this point we had stopped last time that if there is a sudden rush of affection then what happens to the astral body so we had seen if the person like a mother suddenly feels a lot of love towards the child then what will happen we just saw the astral body and now see what has happened to the astral body the human being the physical frame of the human being is still there inside hardly we can make out so much of matter has been added to the astral body of the uh, reddish color with so much of movement and work workpools forming and shooting from these workpools are these uh, astro mental forms which we in short we can call a thought form these are shooting towards the person towards whom one has an affection so mother is having affection towards the child let's suppose the child is present here on the right hand side then this mother's astral body will be shooting continuously these darts the bullets towards the child and they will add on to the child's astral body affecting the child's astral body in a positive way the growth of the affection in the astral body of the child will also happen and here a lot of influx of this kind of higher matter the matter denoting love and affection has added on to the astral body of this so the more a person exhibits expresses feels these higher emotions that we talked about devotion and love especially spirituality sympathy the more the astral body of that person will grow there is no limit to the growth in physical body at least we have some limit but in the astral body it can grow and they have said virtually there is no limit one can have a big astral body also normally the astral body is projecting about 18 inches from the physical plane but in the spiritually developed person it is much much more bigger than the normal developed person which is about normal average person i would say about 18 inches it is much much more wider so here we we read about this thing last time now this is the devotional type of person the same thing will happen when uh, there is a sudden devotional burst or person feels devotional a feeling comes over overcomes the person and one is down let's suppose we go and attend a kirtan somewhere and we feel lot of devotion then what is happening here is this is the way our astral body will become it will absorb a lot of matter uh, of the devotional type the blue color type and in this case the the whirlpools here 
they will rush out but not towards any person but they will go up so they will go up in the upper direction and this is how they have said these darts will happen and they will go up towards whatever they think is the deity the deity uh, it will go towards that so what we'll do is We'll read a little bit about the devotional part. So here uh, we just saw this this diagram. This is the the picture of the astral body undergoing intense devotional uh, feeling has overcome in this person. So such a person, what is about such a person, it is written, like a nun who is engaged in contemplation, we see that this outburst of devotion is also rare, but the coils, they are also formed like in the case of when there is a lot of love. These coils are the, these are the, what they are calling coils. And they pass out from the astral body and they become upward rushing spires as we just saw this is the upward rushing spire this uh, this of course is the diagram given in man visible and invisible but this other diagram is given in the book thought forms so i will suggest those who are interested they should read both the books this is the thought form which is actually rushing out from these coils. So instead of becoming round headed projectiles as it happened in the case of love, these are the round projectiles which happened in the case of love. Here we will have these things happening, rushing out from the from the astral body. Now we come to intense anger. So let's say uh, this is uh, what we had covered. So I have basically uh, summarized what we had done last time. Now we come on to the next set of uh, five conditions. Uh, which are of the negative type and we will see them so that we understand what happens when we or we see someone else undergoing these kind of negative states of emotion then what will be seen if we could see their assault bodies. so this is the on the left side this darkish thing the same thing is happening a lot of coils or these round things are forming in the case of intense love, they were reddish, pinkish reddish, rose reddish color, crimson color, dark reddish color. In the case of devotional outbursts, they were bluish color, different shades of blue were there. Here they are black with lightning type of reddish spikes coming out of this. So let us understand what CW Peter says when there is intense anger in a person, what is happening? Then the astral body is temporarily obscured by the rush of feeling. But the feeling is of malice and ill will. Here also coils or vortices are formed. But this time they are heavy and like thunderous masses of black color and they are lit up from within by active hatred. The person is feeling so much of anger and hatred towards someone that his whole astral body is transformed into this kind of a creature.
these fiery arrows of uncontrolled anger shoot out like flashes of lightning. What happens is that this man who is undergoing this kind of intense anger, his he has lost control of himself. Even should, C.W. Peter says, even should the discipline of education and custom still withhold him from outward violence, meaning he is feeling angry and because of his culture and his upbringing, he does not express the anger outwardly. Even then, his astral body is transformed into this kind of the structure that we have just seen. These terrible flashes are penetrating other astral bodies like swords. Even then he would be shooting out these reddish spikes, we can say, or projectiles, we can say. These are the projectiles. They will be shooting out from him and all the people around him, their astral bodies will be penetrated or affected by this person's, uh, these uh, these, these the kind of uh, lightning strikes. So, the penetrating other bodies, astral bodies like swords, and the man's injuring those about him just as really as though less visibly if he assaulted them on the physical plane. So, violence is still happening. Though on the physical plane he is not beating up some, per some person, but on the astral plane, the action has taken place. On the astral plane, from his, even though he is not knowing this, but from the in the astral plane, from his astral body, these darts, these swords, these uh, spears, these uh, flashes, these lightning strikes, uh, they are going on from his astral body to all those who are around him, irrespective of all those who are around him, not only towards the person, but also to other people also. So, he is a source of danger to others. Not only this, he has lost control of his astral body for a time being, so he is utterly defenseless also. Because passion has entirely controlled him. And the true man has temporarily lost hold of his body. The ego, which is manifesting itself, ego is the egoic consciousness or the higher self, it is manifesting itself through the causal body. That is the true man for us, for the personality. It has lost control of its vital meaning, the astral body. Under those circumstances, what can happen on the astral plane is that another and stronger willed person or entity may seize this person's astral body and possess it. This is the danger for him, the person who is now enraged or is in intense anger. So the person who is in angry state is also dangerous for other people, but he himself is also in danger of losing control of the astral body to somebody else on the astral plane who can seize his body and use it. In other words, at such a moment, when a man is transported with rage, he is liable to be seized and obsessed either by a dead man of similar nature or by some evil artificial element whose vibrations synchronize with those which are dominating him. Therefore, not only is he a danger to his fellows, but he is an appalling danger to himself. Thankfully, this condition does not last for more than a few minutes. But as it passes away, it leaves its mark behind. The person will still retain a lot of amount of scarlet or this angry portion, the blackish portion, which will be which will make him easier to express the same kind of anger which he has expressed now. So this was about the person who has who displays anger.
this is the anger wala part that we have seen now this is something when the person is in fear there is panic then what happens how does the astral body look like then when we have a panic attack when we are extremely fearful of some situation or of a person then this is what happens and this is how the change happens in the astral body let us read what they have written a sudden shock of terror will in instantly suffuse meaning fill up the entire body with curious livid ray mist while horizontal lines of sun so basically uh, he is saying that gray color will predominantly come here and fill up the astral body and a lot of horizontal lines will come but with such movement that the person's astral body will appear as if is having zigzag lines because there is a lot of movement these are actually horizontal lines of gray but there is a lot of movement and so much of movement is there that if you take a snapshot if you take a picture then it will appear like this so he says that it's very difficult to explain but this is the best that they can do he says it is impossible to convey an adequate idea of it by a picture but whatever they can show they have shown to us and the whole body quivers means moves trembles helplessly like a child such a person so like in the physical body when we are afraid we have a lot of shaking and trembling in the same way in the astral body also this happens so this is what happens when there is intense fear or terror such an appearance as this denotes deadly panic and it usually goes away but again the same thing the more we have such experiences the more it becomes easier for them to be repeated again and after they have passed away the residual matter of similar type is retained in the astral body or grows in the astral body to a considerable uh, to a considerable extent so that it becomes easier for such a person to again undergo the same emotion now we take up the irritable man so if this is the astral body of an irritable man Here, on the left side, this is the astral body of an irritable man. We can see here the outline of the physical body is there inside, but the body, the the whole, uh, the, a lot of change has happened in the body, and we we'll just now understand what has happened with the person's astral body here. The astral body usually shows a broad band of scarlet as one of its basic predominant features, and scarlet means you know reddish color, that red, dark red color, and these small small specks or flecks of scarlet can be seen also. We can see these small 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 as if something is raining here. Small, small dots or lines are there. These are what he is calling flex, like exclamation when we type or we write in English language exclamation marks. Those are the the that is the shape that happens, and it is present throughout the astral body. These are the results of little accessions of vexation, meaning the, these are denoting small, small worries, and these are constantly occurring in the ordinary life. this person who is irritable easily irritated every time something happens in the life of this person small small things happen like when he is trying to drink coffee and it becomes cold then he gets irritated if he misses a train he gets irritated like this so he has so many reasons to become irritated such a person who is easily irritable and shows this irritation more or less throughout the day such a person as the body has been 
shown here. This is this scarlet or the dark reddish part shows anger. That person is not only irritable but is also angry or impatient. So this scarlet flash shows the uncontrolled feelings of the impatience and anger. And in some cases, C. W. Let me to say, these little messengers of undisciplined temper, these exclamation marks, they fly outwards towards the person who is supposed to be responsible for whatever has gone. So if I feel somebody is guilty of making me irritable or angry, then these small, small red, scarlet, dark red, these small, small darts will go towards that from my astral body towards the astral body of that other person. But in many other cases, when there is a general state of irritation, they, these scarletish darts, they simply remain floating within him, suspended in the matter of the astral body. And they will show this picture as we have seen. Then uh, we go on to uh, two last two conditions. The first that we will see is the case of a miser, a conjuice person, a person who is, does not give money easily away. Wants to, not only money, this is a mental condition actually. Though it is expressed outwardly on the physical level more in terms of money and possession, but it is a mental outlook. So the miser is there. You can see, we can hardly see the, uh, you can hardly see the physical frame in this and we can see lots of bands here all around. So we will understand and read a very interesting thing about the miser. In the case of a miser, there is total lack, absence of devotion and also affection to a great extent. There is a lot of greed, selfishness, the person will deceive others and there is a cunningness in this such a person because he wants to keep the things that he has and take from others also. He doesn't want to part away with many of his belongings or money or any such thing. And there is very little sensuality also. But he says that the most remarkable characteristic is seen in the curious series of parallel horizontal lines. You just seen those lines? These are the horizontal lines which bar the oval, meaning the, which cover the oval at all, on all the sides and they give the impression that the man is confined within a cage. He is isolated, he is in a prison, he is in a jail. These bars are of deep brown color. Please remember these, these, these are of deep brown color because the next that we will see is about depression. They will also have the similar feature but in depression the, the colors will be, this is the case of depression, the acid body of a depressed person. Here also you have horizontal bars but these are of grayish color. Here, of, here they are of dark brown, deep brown color. It is obvious that this man has shut himself away from the world and that vibrations from without cannot readily affect him. Probably in this way, he escapes some of the ordinary temptations of life. But he also makes himself impervious to the love and sympathy of his friends and to all the higher religious ones. We find such persons that they are from our own standards, insensitive. If they see somebody in suffering, they would not contribute from their pocket anything because they don't want to. They have become impervious. They are in a cage. So they have isolated themselves, even emotionally. And uh, this is what happens, that these kind of prison bars, they prevent the passage of vibrations outward from himself going outward as well as inward coming from outside and he can he himself can pour neither affection nor devotion. He is wrapped absolutely in his own selfishness and is doing no good to any human being. While that is his condition, he can make no progress. 
So if we are having this tendency as occult students, as people on the path of yoga or evolution, then if we have this tendency, then it is difficult for us to make certain progress. Now let's go on to the next one, and this is deep depression. So as we saw here, similar kind of picture, the person is within here, and the astral body has got transformed into a similar kind of picture as the miser. What is happening here? We have dull grey lines instead of the brown, and the whole effect on the astral plane when seen is gloomy and depressing. This picture that we see is that of a person in extreme depression where he feels he is isolated. So this is the picture, these are the grey lines and this person is isolated. He is isolated. We know in depression what happens, the person does not want to talk or interact with his colleagues, his family, with other you know, he is not, he is cut off from the people. He wants to be left alone. This is what is happening at the physical plane, but at the, the astral also it is happening the same thing. The important point here is that C.W. Ledbetter says, no psychic condition is more infectious than this feeling of depression. On the physical plane, we have diseases in which we can give one these are called communicable diseases and we can pass on from one person to another, like COVID. But in the astral plane, the most communicable disease that one can give to another is depression. This is what he is saying, that it is the most infectious emotion or feeling that one can pass on from one person to another. Its vibrations radiate in all directions and introduce their slackening, deadening effects into every astral body within reach, whether the ego to, who, to which that astral body belongs is an incarnation or not. Meaning, whether, so if some person is there in deep depression, then that person will infect all the others around him irrespective of those people who are around such a person are currently having a physical body, that is they are living in a physical body or they are dead, they have left their physical body and are just existing on the astral plane, it doesn't matter. All the people on the astral plane, all the astral plane, um, all the astral bodies around such a person will be affected negatively. So, such a depressed person is a nuisance and a danger to all, whether living or to dead. Importance of this is that supposing I am in depression and I say, okay, listen, I am in depression, I am in my house, I am not talking to you, I am not interacting with you, I am not giving my depression to you, so what is your problem? I am living on my own, alone, so let me be alone. But here C.W. Ledbetter is saying that even though that person may be alone on the physical plane, then also on the astral plane, wherever he is living, the people around him on the astral plane, they will be affected. So really we are never alone in that sense, even though we may be isolated in the, astral, in the physical plane, but in the astral plane we are affecting others. And when such a person during sleep will leave his physical body and move in the astral plane, he will again be inflicting this kind of, or you know, giving this kind of depression to all the others around him. So that is why even in the, at the feet of the master, we are told that uh, to be careful about depression. The only man who is proof against such influence of depression is he who understands something of the purpose of life, who regards it from philosophical and common sense standpoint. So this is it uh, regarding the said. So I brought these up because I thought that maybe um, we should know about these. Usually we don't uh, come across them in our uh, talks, 
and uh, uh, we skip them and we hope that the the students will lead them on their own. But sometimes when we highlight them, uh, it becomes uh, very important for us to realize it reinforces that we should not or we should try not to have these kind of negative uh, emotions. Here, let us just summarize it a little bit. A person who is developed or is well on the way of development towards spirituality will have more or less five or up to, they have said, even up to nine rates of vibration happening within the astral body. Or for a person who can see such a person's astral body, will see only five to nine colors in the astral body of the person that we are talking about. Of course, there will be many shades in between, but usually normal people have 50 or even up to 100 traits. You know, all this which I have written here is taken up from the book The Astral Body by Arthur E. Powell. So here Arthur E. Powell has taken up the matter from many, many books. So he has compiled that and he has written that many people have 50 to 100 traits and the whole surface of the astral body is broken up into little, little whirlpools and cross currents, all battling one against another in mad confusion. This is the normal state of affair in a normal, so-called normal person who is at one moment thinking and emoting or feeling about something and in five minutes he will change and so this is a lot of confusion which is happening in a normal person because of worries, fears, irritation, so many things which are happening and going through that person, anxieties and all that. That is why so many things are there and the, there are 50 to 100 days going on. But for a person who is on the path of spirituality or development, will only have five to up to nine rates. We have now understood what is meant by five to nine rates, what is meant by 50 to 100 rates. So, if we want to have a nice looking astral body and a controlled astral body, then we will try to keep ourselves um, having these five to seven types of, or nine types of emotions um, predominantly happening towards, uh, throughout the day. Uh, we'll come to that if we have time. Uh, the astral body which vibrates 50 ways at once is not only ugly but also serious annoyance. It's like the physical body, we have our 50 muscles all together moving together. You know, the legs and arms are all moving together. So what a side it would be. In the same way in the astral plane also, we see the astral body of such a person who is trying to do 50 things at the same time, what the side it would be. Such astral effects are contagious. They affect others, and of course, negatively, they are affecting others. So, the remedy is to eliminate worry, fear, and annoyance. And the student of occultism must not have personal feelings that can be affected under any circumstances whatsoever. Now, this is, of course, the advanced student. He should try to balance his mind and emotion in such a way that if uh, some impact comes from outside, he should be able to to retain his balance or even if he becomes unbalanced to come back to his balance very fast. This is one can say a kind of goal of the student occultism. Now we uh, go on to another section and that is the functions of the astral body. They can be grouped under three headings. Number one is to make sensation possible. Second is to serve as a bridge between mental and physical bodies. And third is to act as independent Michael of conscious of connection. So I'll go briefly over these. The time is less now. I'll try to finish off with this. Now, if we read, if we try to understand human beings from the point of view of uh, principles, then we have what in theosophy we call the lower part middle. The physical body, the etheric body, then there is prana, which is flowing through the etheric body, and then there is the desire or the karma or the what is going through in the astral body. 
the reason for uh, taking the lower part of your hair is you understand it as well, as I go further. That when sensation happens, usually we think that on the physical plane, when the physical body is touched or the physical five sense organs of the physical body, when they bring the impressions and they send the impression inwards towards the brain, then actually the physical body is feeling or, or having sensation. But in theosophical literature, it comes that the physical body is only a collector of impressions through the sense organs. The impressions through the sense organs, they are taken up and they are passed on to the etheric body. In the etheric body, the prana then combines along with these or uses these and as we read further what is written here then we will understand this impacts from without striking on the physical body are conveyed as vibrations by the agency of prana vitality but they would remain as vibrations only meaning from the sense organs they would just remain as vibrations what we see through the eyes the picture will come to the brain, will pass on to the etheric brain, but it will remain only a picture. There will be no recognition. It will be just a snapshot, a picture, a video taken. But if the karma, which is the principle of sensation, of feeling, if it does not come into play, then these vibrations will only remain as vibrations. In other words, this karma principle or the desire principle or the astral body, this is the one which makes the vibrations possible for us to recognize as feelings or sensations. So really the seat of sensation is the astral body. That is why the first function of the astral body is to make sensation possible. Without the astral body, there will be no sensation possible. Without the etheric body or the prana, the sensation also will not be possible. So, let us take the help of modern science. When anesthesia is given during surgery, then what happens is the physical body is cut by the surgeon but there is no pain. What has happened is the anesthetic which is given to the physical body makes the etheric double move away and the astral body move away from the physical. There is a gap between these and the physical, dense physical body. The, the result of that is that the sensation is then now not possible and the surgery can take place. Similarly, uh, in mesmerism also, if the etheric double, that part, is replaced by the mesmer's own etheric matter, then also sensation of that person will go away from the body. So, but to make it cut short, sensation is only possible if the astral body is present because the seat of sensation, sensation by sensation we mean feeling. Only then it is possible. That is why it is this is the first notion. So here pleasure and pain. So whenever we have a feeling, it is usually either it is a good feeling, bad feeling, or a, where we are not really much concerned about it. So pleasure and pain do not arise until astral center is reached. So sensation is happening actually at the astral body level. Hence karma or desire joined to prana is spoken of as the breath of life. The vital sentient principle spread over every particle of the body. So this fourth principle karma is the life manifesting in the astral body and its characteristic is the ability to feel. 
which in its rudimentary form is sensation and in its complex form is the emotion. So from the sensation, feeling, to desire, to emotion, which is a more complex form of desire, because desire associated with thinking, they form emotions. So these all various aspects, they are all covered under the astral body or they are all a function of the astral body. And in, in uh, theosophical uh, parlance literature, we just call them as desire. So they are summed up sometimes of desire, which is having rag, attraction towards something, or dvesh, or repulsion towards something. The astral body is often known as kam root, and in the older nomenclature, it was called animal soul. Now the second function of the astral body is to serve as a bridge between the mental and the physical body. The mental body cannot directly affect the physical brain or the physical body. It can only do through the astral body. So, what happens is, when in the physical body our senses get impacted, then the impact or the vibration is passed inwards by the means of prana and it becomes a sensation or feeling in the astral body, then this uh, feeling in the astral body is further conveyed or sent forward, just like we sent email, and to the lower mental body or the manas principle, or we can call it as the mind, where the recognition of this feeling takes place, analysis of that feeling takes place or what is seen in the physical plane. Classification happens, judgment happens, comparison happens with the previous such. So whatever is happening in terms of perception, which is perception will involve all the activities of the manas. Like I said, analysis, comparison, judgment, decision regarding memory, then all these things are happening at the level of the mind. But the mind the, can only receive this through the astral body. It cannot directly receive from the physical body. It has So therefore, the astral body becomes a bridge between the physical body and the mental body. Therefore, without the astral body, there would be no connection between the external world and the mind of man. No connection between the physical impacts and the perception of them by the mind. Conversely, now in the other way around also, when we think we want to do something on the physical plane, then whatever we think, we set in motion the mental matter, which then affects the astral body, the matter of the astral body, which then is further transferred to the etheric matter which in then further it gets transferred to the dense physical matter, that is to the brain, physical brain, and then the action takes place. This is how we are using or taking the help of the astral body as a bridge between the mental and the physical bodies. The third is, and with this I will uh, close this today's session, to act as an independent vehicle of consciousness and action. The astral body will now slowly, slowly get evolved and become an independent vehicle for the ego, that is the higher consciousness, to function on the astral plane as an independent body, just like our physical body is an independent body capable of functioning on the physical plane. So in the course of a person through incarnation after incarnation after incarnation, what happens in the man's astral body? There are two distinct stages which the person goes through. The astral body gets developed to a fairly high point. Meaning, as we saw earlier, from the undeveloped astral body, the undeveloped astral body, this is the undeveloped astral body, belonging to undeveloped person. Then it goes further and becomes the average developed person's astral body like this. And then finally, 
it becomes like this. Now, in the, this developed person, the astral body is now fit to function as, a, as an independent vehicle. So the first stage which happens is, is that the astral body is developed to a fairly high point as a transmitting vehicle which passes on the various emotions and the sensations up and down. Then it has to be developed as an independent body in which the man can function on the astral plane. And here it becomes important to understand the term calm manas. The normal, like we are normal people, our brain intelligence in our waking consciousness, when we have what we call as mind, is usually a union of this karma principle or the desire principle and the intellectual, the mind principle. They are working together in such a union that they are usually called karma manas in normal people. Rather, calm manas is described by HPV as rational but earthly or physical intellect of man encased in and bound by matter and therefore subject to the influence of the latter. This is the lower self which acting on this plane of illusion imagines itself to be the real self or ego. Meaning this is what we think we are. Now, we have already seen that the mind itself cannot affect the brain cells, so it has to unite with karma. And when it unites with karma in the brain, as we are in our waking consciousness, this is what is exhibiting in the brain as the brain consciousness. And that is why we have the memory and all the functions of analysis and comparison and judgment and so many different, different facets that we have, along with the emotions and everything manifesting in the brain consciousness. This manas that we talk about is the lower manas which is associated with karma. And because this lower manas or the lower mental body and the astral body and the physical body, they are taken up in each incarnation and they die in each incarnation. That is why as a human being, normal human being, there is no memory of the previous lives. So long as the consciousness which is present in this calm, manas and physical brain cannot rise beyond and enter into the causal body or the higher manas, till that time we will have no memory of previous lives because this mechanism or this uh, union of calm, manas and physical brain is happening afresh every in every incarnation and therefore they, it has like in this incarnation we have our physical body and our mind this mind is made of our emotions and our our thinking that is the calm manas but we can't remember our previous life because our consciousness is limited to this physical body and calm manas if we were meaning the consciousness which is there within us that chetna that i in us can go beyond the calm manas and enter into the region of the higher manas, then we will be able to tap the memory of the previous lives. Before that, we can't. So this third function of the astral body, what happens is when the astral body becomes an independent vehicle and during sleep or when we go into trance, then it is possible for the astral body to go out or separate itself from the physical body and move around in the astral world or astral plane and function there freely. Second is, if the person has become advanced enough, then the person will, develop, will raise the Kundalini. And such a person, when he raises the Kundalini on the physical plane, will make the normal physical consciousness as we have now, continuous with the astral body's consciousness, the barrier between the two is called the web breaks away we don't have time to go through what is the web and what are the various chakras in the astral plane also but this this will go away and the person will be able to leave the physical body at will and work and function in the astral plane and then can return back at will to the physical body so such is a person who is very advanced person he has to be Yes, we learn to do this. So with this, uh, I will close.
Thanks, Dr. Rajiv. You've explained different dimensions and phenomena of the astral world and astral body in simple words, encompassing the wisdom from many theosophical books. Now, anybody have any question, please ask by unmuting yourself. Or he want, anybody wants to add something, he may do. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm uh, Sir, uh, you have told about uh, uh, the irritable body and uh, the symptoms and sign symptoms of the uh, irritable bodies are very uh, different. And how to rectify this irritability of the person? Yes. Uh, thank you, Sister Nirmal. Uh, Sister Nirmal Mehta is a Brahma Kumari from Radhyana. She has joined us. The uh, way is that we need to eliminate worry and small, small annoyances that happen to us. This is how they have written that the ability to uh, stabilize the astral body by understanding that by understanding that many things are happening to us and coming to us because of our karma. And not only the previous karma of this incarnation, but also past karma of all the different other incarnations that we had. All the causes that we had set up, we are going to now enjoy the fruits of those causes. So this is number one. When this is understood properly, then there is a lot of stability which happens in the person automatically. Because what is happening or coming to us is because we have put in the causes. That is why it is coming to us. We can't blame anybody else. When this is understood, that is why we uh, put a lot of emphasis on understanding the law of karma. When we understand the law of karma to a great extent, also, we understand that we are the reason for whatever happens to us, we are the reason. So, whom to blame? If suppose, from my own hands, I lose the balance and a cup falls onto the floor and it gets broken, then whom should I blame? I can't blame. So, I will just say, oh. so I will learn to accept and learn to deal, to respond to such an event in the proper way. So learning the law of karma, that things are coming to us. Number two, how to respond to them in the way in which we do not make further negative karma and to exhaust that karma which has come to us. Number three, that when we put in the causes, then certain effects are going to happen. We have the confidence that whatever is in our hands, when we do that, then we are going to set up the the causes so that the effects will come, then a lot of worry will go away, anxiety will go away. That what will happen, whether the thing that we want, will it happen or not happen. So a lot of worry regarding future events will also be settled. But it takes time, it takes effort, it takes intention that we need to do. The, the fact that we saw that picture of the astral body of the irritable person, whenever now irritation will come to us, or we will feel irritable, or if we are easily irritable, then we should try to remember that picture and say that, oh, we are becoming such a person. Let us try to work upon ourselves. Let us try to stabilize ourselves. Let us try. So we can take help of meditative exercises to calm ourselves, to stabilize our minds, to have the ability to focus on something so these are the methods in which one is able to do. It's a very vast topic, but overall, a person who is going in the spiritual side, trying to evolve himself, he will then, what Patanjali says, has to eliminate the vrittis. And uh, while doing that, he will eliminate a lot of worry about the future events, 
a lot of fear that something wrong may happen to me. Of course, one has to be cautious. But the the residual effect of that worry and fear will not be there. So, supposing we are going for an interview for a job, there will be automatically some amount of worry, anxiety. There will be nervousness. Now, if a person who is well grounded in Fiasul or in let's say spiritual practices, such person will say, listen, I have done my preparation. I will go there confidently. I will do my bit there very nicely. The rest is not in my hands. If I had, if I deserve by my karma to get that job, I will get that job. By worrying unnecessarily, by getting anxious over it unnecessarily, I will not be able to perform well also and I will make up in my astral body the picture that we have just shown. I would I do not want to have that kind of astral body. You know, like this. So these are the various ways in which one can help ourselves. I hope I was been able to answer to some extent the So answer. sir uh, all the this rectification has to be done on the physical level. At the psychological and physical level, yes. We are going to rearrange the structure, the furniture of our mind. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, Dermal Ji. If you have any question or you want to add something, you don't know. It's time to close. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you, तम सो मोतिर गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृतम गमय सर्वे भवन्त सुखिन सर्वे संत निरामय सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्त न कश्चित दुख भागवे ओम शांति शांति शांति